All right, chip of the day. Chip of the day is the CD4017. 4017, very, very classic old chip. Very old chip. Um, and uh, you'll still see them kicking around today, especially on uh, eBay and stuff on a particular little circuit from China. We'll show that later. Um, so what is it? Is this is a counter divider and it does count, but it doesn't count in binary. It counts in strange ways. It says here it's a uh, uh, five stage Johnson counter, particularly type of uh, Johnson counter. And um, let's see, let's uh, take a look at the next page here. Uh, so this is um, the way that the outputs come out and there is a clock input. There's a clock enable input and we'll talk about that a little bit later and then a reset. So you can reset the uh, flip flops and then you can clock it and let it go. But the way that it counts is it counts um, one, two, three, four, five. So each line goes high and in succession. So it's not counting in binary. It's just the, the zero one lights up, the one one lights up, the two two lights up, the, the three one lights up, the four one lights up, you know, and, and it just keeps going uh, across like that. So let's take a look at the circuit and then we'll talk about the, uh, talk about the chip a little bit. All right, so I have a little breadboard here. I have a little 555 module. Here's the chip. And then I have some LEDs with resistors on them. And you can see that the, this is how the Johnson counter. Now it does count to 10, but this particular little LED strip I have only has uh, six LEDs on it. So it just counts, counts up to six and goes around, comes back around again. So that's what it does. And so it's nice for sequencing. So if you're building something like a uh, synthesizer and you want to build a sequencer, well, here's a way to sequence, but you can't change the timing. They'll all be eighth notes or all be quarter notes or something. So it's not a very, very useful chip, but uh, yeah, it counts across. Um, I actually used one of these chips a very, very, very long time ago. I think it was the very first circuit I ever built for money. Um, there was a friend of a friend who had a business that um, put those little reflectors on the pavement, those little reflector pucks on the pavement. He had this, basically a go-kart and you steered the go-kart with your feet. Like one pedal steered it, you, you went forward and backwards and the other pedal was brake and, brake and accelerator at the same time. So steering and accelerate. So he had his hands free and he could drive this go-kart around. Now this go-kart had a wheel that rested on the ground and it could count the distance you went. And so as the wheel turned, it would, it would increment this, um, this counter. So it would, it would move along each time. And then the output of these um, would be to a solenoid that dispensed the glue that you put down the reflector cup. So uh, I had one of these, I think I had 16, uh, 16 uh, selections, and then it would put down the glue at all 16, but then I put in a row of switches and you could set the switches to any pattern you wanted to. You could have like three and then a space and then three and then a space. And so it would put down three blobs of glue and then it would wait a while and then we'd put three blobs of glue. So he could, he, his different clients needed different patterns. And so he could toggle those into the switches and then they would lay this glue down to the ground. So anyway, yeah, that was in San Diego a long, that was, but it was the very, very, I think, I think it gave me a hundred bucks. <laughs> I think I made a hundred bucks and uh, I designed the circuit for him and prototyped it. Um, yeah, pretty cool. He was kind of a friend. So, I mean, the hundred bucks was just kind of, you know, his thing. Here's, 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 here's some money. Um, so yeah, so I have a whole bunch of these, a uh, bunch of these chips for some strange reason. Uh, oh, I know I, I inherited them. Uh, they were part of that estate sale. So anyway, I have a whole, whole bunch of them and uh, we see it counting here. Now, the cool thing about the uh, 4,000 series of CMOS chips, um, let's see, we're getting ahead of it. Let me show, let me show the schematic for this, uh, for this thing. In fact, uh, let me just put in a, uh, I'll, 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 uh, put it in, in video. I'll give you a nice copy of this. Um, it's a five, five, five timer and some LEDs and it counts. So that's kind of your, what's called chasing lights or something like that. Um, or you can just go to eBay and buy one for 99 cents. I'll put together for you. Um, but anyway, if you want to learn about circuit, this is a good way to do it or you want to build a glue dispenser or whatever. 
Um, so these um, 4000 series chips, uh, it says high voltage rating, 20 volts. You can actually run these devices off of 20 volts. So, so uh, right now I'm operating off of 5 volts. So let me disconnect the 5 volt line and let me hook up 12 volts instead. Now normally that would just blow up your circuit. But here um, the 555 doesn't care about 12 volts and the, uh, the 4017 doesn't care about five, uh, 12 volts and the LEDs just turned out to be super bright. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there you go. Yeah, anywhere up to 20 volts. Uh, I think it's rated to 18 actually. I think 20 volts is like absolute max or something like that, but it'll run at 18 fine. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So again, you know, a lot of times people think when they're designing analog circuits, they can't throw in digital things because they don't have a 5 volt supply laying around. But these 4000 series parts allow you to put in, uh, to put in digital logic on a 15 volt system, on a 12 volt system, yeah, they, they, they don't care. So, uh, let's see, what else did I want to talk about? Um, oh, there's, a, there's a, a, a clock inhibit, and let's go ahead and do the clock inhibit. It is pin 13, so pin 13 right now is ground. Let me, uh, and they put high. So now, even though the uh, 555 is toggling, the clock is not it's gated and it won't make it through the chip and so it stays stationary so it's like a pause button or something like that and you can continue on the other button is a reset like i said it resets all the flip flops um but i wanted to talk about the um the the clock inhibit uh circuit teach you something all right so this is the clock inhibit uh circuit so there's a couple interesting things about it one is this is a schmidt trigger uh, that's really, really nice. So there's a little insignia here that uh, kind of looks like this, and that, that means it's a Schmidt trigger. So it's a Schmidt trigger input on the clock. So very cool. And then clock and in, in, in clock inhibit, inhibit. And then there's something here that looks like it's a, it's a, a NOR gate, right? It's an OR gate with a, a, a knot on the end. The little circles mean inversion. So it's a normal OR, but then the output is inverted. That's what these circles do. So if you have a, a simple inversion, it's just positive going in, negative going out. Uh, so that's how that's, that's uh, done. Now, okay, let's do some fancy digital design. This is what's known as De Morgan's Theorem. De Morgan, De Morgan's Theorem. And De Morgan says this. What is that? I've never seen that before. What are you talking about? Well, little dots mean and, and pluses mean or. Okay, so this reads A and B equals A or B. And then the lines over them mean not, okay, the inversion. So this is A and B not equals not A or not B. This says A or B not equals A not and B not. And you go, okay, you lost me. Never mind. I'm turning off the channel. You get, you, you've gone too far. All right. So let's look at this one. What does this one say? A and B. Okay. So that is a and. Okay. So we have an and. We have an and function over here. And on this side of the equation, we have an or. Okay. So we'll draw the or over here. Okay. This is what ands and ors look like. Okay. So we have some type of and equals some type of or. That's what this is saying. Some type of and equals some type of or. Okay. A, B, A, B. Okay. And it says that A and B not. Okay. I'm putting a little circle there. That means not equals not A, put the circle here, and not B. Put the knot there. So, um, if you look at these two, and you don't have to think of any math, if you put circles everywhere, you change the shape. So if you have an and, you make it into an or. If you have an or, you make it into an and. You just change the shape. So here, you can see that if we put circle, 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 we have a circle, circle, and these two circles cancel each other out. So we have a circle, 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 we make it an OR gate because we make it the other one way, we end up with this. If we start here, if we make it a circle, 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 then we have a circle, circle cancels each other out, circle, circle cancels each other out. We still have the circle at the end, and then we change the shape. Go back to this one. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So this one is a Orby. Okay, so we start with an or, okay, equals A and B. And, okay, but it's A and B not equals not A and not B. So these two are the same. Okay, and you can see that if we put a zero, uh, circle, 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 and change the shape, we end up here. If we put a circle, 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 change the shape, we end up over here, all right? So, what we have here, okay, if we do the circle, circle, circle thing, we end up with a circle, circle, change the shape, circle, circle, circle cancels each other out, so we end up with this instead. So instead of a or knotted, a nor gate, we end up with a, a not not and gate. And that's the actual function that we have here. We actually have, uh, uh, we need both of these to work if we're going to enable it, which means we have low true logic here, okay? So this has to be low true logic, which means this has to be low true logic, which is this high true logic, which means this is low true logic. So they drew these wrong as well. So, that, so these things are all drawn wrong, <laughs> all right? It really should be drawn uh, this way, it really should be drawn this way. Okay, high high in, it goes into a low a low output. We get a low here. This is a low. And these both have to be low for it to, for you to get a signal out here, which means this is high true logic and this is low true logic. So anytime you have a low true logic, you'd like to see the circle on that side. Anytime you have a high true logic, you'd like to have the high, no circles at all. And over here, we've changed the shape and we put in some circles to make this function. It's not a nor function in the circuit. It's actually an and function in the circuit. Um, so anyway, uh, I encourage you to look up De Morgan's theorem and uh, look about all the stuff. This is called Boolean. Um, this is the way that mathematicians and people write equations and stuff. And there's a whole bunch of things that you can learn about uh, Carnot maps and all kinds of stuff. So I used to be really good at digital design back in the day. I wouldn't say really good, but I mean, I could hold my own. I designed some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool digital circuits because microprocessors weren't around. Uh, they didn't exist. And so you had to do things in, in discrete uh, uh, digital logic. And so you had to do things like this to make your, your logic true. And this just having the circles and the shapes in the correct way just helps you remember things and keeps your brain straight.